I'm Susanne Urach from the Medical University of Vienna and I'm happy to be able to present our work on group sequential designs for clinical trials with multiple treatment arms. Multi-arm, multi-stage clinical trials are important, especially in the framework of rare diseases, because it requires less patients to compare several treatments to a controlled and separate clinical trials. Let's consider a simple example, the comparison of two treatments to a common control. The endpoint is normally distributed with known variants and one-sided tests are performed. We consider group sequential trials with two stages where in an interim analysis treatment arms may be stopped for efficacy or fertility. How can we design such a trial? Which stopping rule should be used? We will see that this depends on the objective. We consider two different objectives. The objective to identify all treatments that are superior to control and the objective to identify at least one treatment that is superior to control. The objective determines the stopping rule. If all superior treatments are to be identified, the separate stopping rule is used, where only treatment arms for which a stopping boundary is crossed stop at interim. If at least one superior treatment is to be identified, we use the simultaneous stopping rule, where the whole trial stops if at least one rejection boundary is crossed at interim. To control the family-wise error rate, we use the closed testing principle. To this end, we define group sequential boundaries for both the intersection hypothesis test as well as the elementary hypothesis tests. Our research addresses the following questions. First, can one relax the elementary boundaries when stopping simultaneously compared to separate stopping? Second, how large is the impact on expected sample size and power when stopping simultaneously or separately? Last, what is the performance if optimized critical boundaries are used? As an example, consider O'Brien-Fleming boundaries. If the group sequential boundaries for separate stopping are used, the family-wise error rate is controlled under separate as well as simultaneous stopping. But under simultaneous stopping, the procedure becomes strictly conservative. So why does this hold? For simultaneous stopping, if only one hypothesis is rejected at interim, the other hypothesis is no longer tested at the final analysis, and not all alpha is spent. Therefore, it's possible to improve the elementary boundaries for simultaneous stopping. The upper graph illustrates how the boundaries can be improved while still controlling the family-wise error rate. The lower two graphs show the expected sample size and conjunctive power under separate and simultaneous stopping for various effect sizes. Both kinds of stopping rules lead to the same disjunctive power, that is the power to reject at least one hypothesis. However, under the simultaneous stopping rule, the expected sample size is lower at the cost of a lower conjunctive power, defined as the power to reject both hypotheses. In the next step, we derive optimized stopping boundaries under simultaneous and separate stopping for trials with a fixed disjunctive power of 80%. The objective is to minimize expected sample size while maximizing the conjunctive power. The optimal designs depend on the elementary boundaries and the stopping rule used. The expected sample size under the optimal simultaneous stopping design is 7% lower than under the optimal separate stopping design. This comes at the cost of a loss in conjunctive power of 7 percentage points. However, if the improved boundaries are used, the conjunctive power is the same as in the optimized separate stopping design. So let's come back to the three questions. Can one relax the elementary boundaries when stopping simultaneously compared to separate stopping? Yes, but if improved boundaries are used, the simultaneous stopping rule must be adhered to. How large is the impact on expected sample size and power when stopping simultaneously or separately using O'Brien-Fleming stopping boundaries? A moderate decrease in expected sample size and conjunctive power is observed. The disjunctive power stays the same. What is the performance if optimized critical boundaries are used? If optimized boundaries are used, there is no loss in conjunctive power for the simultaneous stopping rule when using improved boundaries. However, the maximum sample size is larger than under separate stopping. Overall, we note that the optimal design and optimal stopping rule depends on the objective of the trial.